Hello YouTube, this is Mr. Blandis. You are seeing a black screen because I feel more comfortable while reading this story to you when you can't see me. Anyway, I have long awaited to read this. I hope you guys enjoy it. Sit back, close your eyes, try to imagine what you hear. Hopefully, my voice does not become annoying and you click off. I will be reading Calculus Valley. Uh, so, let me begin. Sedina stood with Huskin ledges in hand. Her father, Maudelim, Getting older had to delegate projects to someone with a good head on their shoulders. She was the eldest of his children and one with more wits about her. She took note of what came into the Huskin camp and what supplies were carted in. Her father had decided to put down roots and build a town out away from the conflict. The Aritorians had landed a large military force on the west coast, marking the beginning of an invasion of the Aeolian Empire. This new war was not going well for them. Mordelin, in his foresight, called all Huskin kin to leave the empire, meeting in the ruined lands of Albeliva. Every day since they set up camp, more refugees come. Alvin clans that barely survived the onslaught made their way to them in hopes of freedom. As Sedina counted the goods, a heavy wheeled cart carrying large oak timbers rolled up to be counted. As she started the process of inventory, the sounds of horses came up the muddy road, drew her attention. The first to be seen was Alduin. It was a black-haired elf from the northern territories above Maldoria. He was a real mystery, and of his lineage was unknown but he was staunchly loyal to her father. Arduane rode on his white mare, a prized possession of his. Behind him rode two worn-out soldiers with mud and what looked like blood. From what they wore, Sedina understood they were from the royal court. Sedina! A stern voice behind her broke her gaze. It was her father, and he snuck up on her again. She turned to see Mordelim grinning as he stepped in close. Yes, father? With Mordelim, two assistants followed him. It seems you have forgotten these two. He dug his hand, left hand into a small leather pouch on his belt. Have you been practicing your spells? She gave him a smirk and pushed back her hair over her half-elf ears. You know I don't have to practice like the others do, and I have responsibilities here with working for you. That's why I hired these two. They're smart. Sedina interrupted Mordelin by stepping close and whispering, But they're human. He took an irritated bite of the beef of the jerky in his hand. Your uncle needs to stop telling you stories about what he has done. He watched the people as they passed. Your mother was human. You should be a little more respectful. Sidney stopped talking and watched the carts roll up. 
The assistants would pick a cart and begin to count the contents. She turned ever so slightly to look up at the camp center, where watching Arduin. This will be a nice town when it's done, she said, hoping to change the subject and ease the tension. Mordelem looked up at the camp center, seeing her true focus. You know, he keeps... He killed a lion and brought me his pelt. Had a spear, shaft, and sword handled made from his bones. He pulled another piece of jerky from his side pouch. I am tired of getting pelts and rare items from him. He grinned as he stuffed it into his mouth. Sedina's curl waved in the light breeze. What do you want me to say, father? She grinned. He likes you. He stopped chewing. Pa, He is after you. He held up a piece of jerky offering to her. With a gentle hand, she laid it over his. Father, he's a good elf, hunter and soldier. You know my heart. You know I want to marry him. She looked up towards Alduin, watching him talk to a little girl with flowers. I can't until I know Sierra is ready to take over for you, or he is capable to handle what I do. She dared not mention the other brother, the black sheep of the family. Mordelem looked at the trail of refugees marching up the road. More and more people are coming every day. He swallowed the jerky. He won't wait for you forever. He is a well-sought-after elf. Mordelem softly patted her on the shoulder, then turned up towards Arduin. Sedina looked down at the ledges in her hand, then remembered that she had not seen her brother, Siren, in several days. She handed the ledges and the feather pin to her two assistants, then followed her father's direction. She found Arduin and the two, sol the two soldiers and her father in a large tent used as a clan hall. They were poring over a map of the area. With a wand-like stick, Arduin was giving instructions or a lesson, it seemed, to the others. He paused mid-sentence, noticing Sedina step into the tent. He looked at her with a gentle smile. They went back to the map. From here, Hadel Peak in the west to Ottoman Peak in the east, it measures 400 miles. From here, he placed the stick's tip on the map. The Arun Mountains make up the southern ridge of the valley. To the north is Hidre Mountains. This is like 500, 500 miles stretch. Mordelin plopped mugs of ale on the table, pulling up a chair. So, what sort of things can we find there? Is there any profit that we can pull out of the valley? Alduin thought about this for a moment. All I know is what was told to me by my mentor. It was once a beautiful place. After Doralax was captured, the valley began to die. Mordelam took a deep, long drink, then stopped. What do you mean, die? Mordelam, Mordelam placed the mug on the table and leaned floor, forward. Arduin gently cleared his throat. <clears throat> well, my mentor told me that Dorlax created the valley. He made it for him and his dragon lover to live there in secret. When they took her from him, he lost control and raged the first war against the dragons. 
Mordelam took hold of the wooden mug, Havail. So it's cursed, then. Then down the contents of the mug. I don't know. No one goes there. Many people that live near here say it is a land of the dead. And he was imprisoned there. Arduin became quiet after speaking, not wanting to say too much more. Shouts from the camp broke the silence as three soldiers came running into the hall tent. Sire, we found your son. Or what was left. Well, people, I hope you guys enjoyed the first part of this story. Um, I know I kind of choked up a little bit the car a couple times. I do apologize for that. Uh, hope you guys enjoy it. I will be doing another installment uh, Saturday. That will be my Saturday upload, so you guys can wait for it till then. If you guys have any comments, questions, anything, leave it in the comments below. I do appreciate you guys sticking to the video until now. Please like, subscribe, share if you like. Um, and as always, guys, stay being creative.